Hey everybody, this is Suzanne Evans with Suzanne Evans Art. I wanted to thank y'all for joining me today. Um, one of the things that uh, I had an email about was uh, some mistakes that some of the artists are making in acrylic paint. Um, and they wanted to know how to fix them. So I'm just going to give you a, a quick rundown. I don't want to make this video very long or anything, but just the common mistakes that beginner artists make when using acrylic paints. The very top, top, top mistake that a beginning artist will make with acrylics is they use too much water. Rule of thumb is 30% water to acrylic paint. Um, whenever you use more water to make it more fluid, um, you've got a painting and it, you end up dry brushing because you don't have enough paint in your brush. But to fix that problem, um, you need to add a retardant to your, your paint instead of so much water. You don't want it dripping or anything like that. Whenever it gets too much water in it, um, it break, like I said, it breaks down the pigment binders that are in, in that paint, and it can also make your paint flake. Um, the second mistake a lot of the uh, new artists will make is they don't clean their brushes. You don't clean them correctly. Um, don't just think that you can put a brush in water rinse it out vigorously, and then put it off to the side. When you are through painting and you have rinsed your brushes out really good, take them back, rinse them out again in the sink or wherever you rinse your brushes, um, and add soap. Wash them all off. Um, I'm going to go over um, parts of a brush real quick so you'll know what I'm talking about in the future. So you have your ferrule. And I have some notes here on all these mistakes, too, because there are so many. I've gotten several emails that are wanting to know how to fix this or how to fix that. But um, you have your ferrule, you have your heel, you have the belly, and you have your toe. So when you hear me talking about the ferrule, you don't ever want to get paint up in your ferrule um, when you're loading the brush and that's going to be another video on how to load your brush correctly But you don't want to get all that paint and water all up in in your ferrule You want to keep it down at the toe and the belly um, Of your paintbrush and there is a correct way to load the paintbrush and that'll be another video later on but um, One of the things that you'll get and I'm going to show you whenever you have too much water this is what you're going to get. And I've, I'm using black and white paint today just to, to give you an idea. And we'll just use this paintbrush. Um, you're going to dip your, dip your paintbrush in the water and then just wipe it off on the sides. You don't want to get too much water. But one of the things that I have found that um, when you have your And I come back and I have like way, 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 way too much water. And it's going to be drippy. I'm going to add a little bit more water to that so I can show you what I'm talking about. So that's more than 30% because it's real runny. It breaks down those binders. Breaks down those binders in there. And this is what you're going to get. You're going to get it where it's running. You've got bubbles in it. It wants to run down the the page um, and then if you have just the right amount of paint just to load it in the belly you're gonna have a smoother transition it's not gonna be runny so you can see this is run
canvas. Rinse the brush out vigorously, wipe it off, and I have a, a towel hanging here on my easel, and I just wipe it off and I put it off to the side. So that way your brush doesn't get, it, it, it just, it will mess your brushes up. It will make them come loose from, from the stick. It, it just, it, it's just horrible. Don't do it. I, and I have done it. Um, and I've had to end up going and buying new brushes because it ruined my brushes. Um, if you don't rinse the paint out good, um, from your paintbrush, your paintbrush will be ruined. It will, the bristles will get stiff. Um, and it's just unusable. Can't, can't use it anymore. It's a throwaway. You have to go spend money and buy another one. Um, the next one is, um, I had an email and they were trying to blend their paint and their blending was not working. And what they found out was they were waiting too long to put the next color on and they ended up, they were trying to blend dry paint. Acrylic paints dry very fast. They are not oil. Oil can take, you know, two weeks, a month. I mean, it could just take a long time for oil to dry, but acrylics dry very fast. So you have to be ready to work very fast whenever it comes to acrylic painting. And you're putting that first layer on, say, I'm putting black. We're gonna do just black. And I want that to go more into a gray. And so I'm gonna get a little bit of white. Like I said, I'm using black and white today. And we're just going to start blending that. But you see how that, that's wet paint. I'm going to get a little bit more white, add a little bit more white down here. But it's blending with the black. So that's just a suggestion. Um, I know it's, it's really fast that I just did that, but you can see how it's blended better up with the black. You don't want to leave all these streaks in it, obviously, but I'm just doing a quick rundown of how to blend it up. Um, the next mistake that some will make is they don't use enough paint and you start getting that dry brush effect. So I'm going to use a different brush. I'm going to dip it in my water just a little bit. I'm going to get just a little bit of black. And say you're wanting to draw a tree trunk, just well, the background of a tree trunk. And you start up here, and you can see you get a dry brush effect. You do not have enough paint on there. And you just go back, load it back up, and pull it down. And you can flip it. but that's, you've got more paint in your paintbrush. So that's the next mistake a lot, a lot of people will make that they don't use enough paint. Um, the next one, um, when, when you do use too much water, um, going back to that, when you do use too much water, um, the pigment, it takes a lot longer to dry, to bind, but it does break down that binder and it does start looking really cheap so um, be sure that you you only use up to 30 percent of water uh, you can use a a fluid medium when you go to your local craft store or art supply store uh, instead of using water you can use a fluid medium to mix with it and that will make it more as it is fluid so it won't be um, won't be as, it doesn't break down those binders. Uh, uh, the next one would be, I had a girl email me from Arkansas and um, Kelly wanted to know uh, why she wasn't getting the same effect that I did on some of my paintings. Well, one of the issues was she wasn't using the correct brushes. Um, you need to use with, with uh, Acrylic paints, you need to use synthetic brushes. Um, I have used hog hair brush. 
The only thing with the hog hair brush is it holds a lot of water. So when you put that in that water, you've got to make sure you've got your towel next to you and you wipe that water out. It just needs to be damp when you're putting your brush into the paint. Um, loading your brush is going to be another video, but I'll just go over some really quick things. Um, you push your paint into the belly of your brush. So when you are using, now oh, this is a big one. Um, I use this one on a lot of my, my larger abstract paintings that I do. But when you're going to load your brush, you want to push your brush into the paint. You don't want to go, yeah, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. You don't wanna do it that way. That has a tendency to get up into the ferrule of your brush, which is a no-no. So if you'll just push, push your paintbrush into the paint, that will help load it up into the belly where you want your paint. Not dab, 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 dab. Um, the next one is um, a, a detail brush. I had somebody ask me why they couldn't, why the detail brush wouldn't hold enough paint. Um, you need to have it with the fluid medium mixed with your paint to be able to use that detail brush. The detail brush is very thin and it is what it says it is. It is a detail brush. Um, it is um, not made to paint a a whole canvas. It's made to do little small details or lines or things like that. Um, I don't have my detail brush in here with me right now, but um, just make sure that you add not more than 30% of water to your paint or add that fluid medium to your paint whenever you're using the detail brush. And that way you can just go and go and go and go and um, just keep loading your, your paintbrush up. Um, the blending brush. Um, I don't know what to say about this <laughs> because you can get, well, I use a mop brush and um, you load it at the toe. You don't load it like this or like this or anything, you load it at the toe of your brush. Uh, one thing that can happen is, my lights and stuff just flickered. Uh, one thing that can happen is when you're going in and you're getting this paint, say I'm getting white and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of black and you're vigorously, vigorously, vigorously getting this paint like this around in circles. That can lead to what we call foaming. And when you put it on your canvas, you go to put it, you can see bubbles in there. You you probably, you can't see it on the video, but I can see little bubbles everywhere and that's gonna cause a problem down the road. So you don't want to, uh, you don't want foaming in any of your paintings. Uh, the next ones are uh, mistakes that a lot of beginners make with landscapes. Um, it's just, you know, some real quick little tips here. Um, one thing I noticed whenever I was seeing some of the paintings was beginners want to make a tree look like a candied apple on a stick. So they'll want to go in, and I'm just using this brush just as an example, they'll want to go in and draw a tree trunk. Okay, we're gonna draw this tree trunk. And then they wanna come in and do trees like this. And it looks like a lollipop or a candied apple from the Mid-South Fair when I was younger. Um, the correct way to make a tree would be to make the trunk. Okay, we're doing that. And then you've got other areas. If you go out in nature, you will notice that there is not a tree that looks like a lollipop. Um, the background would need to be darker. And as you, 
I mean, you can just kind of do whatever, doodle, do, 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 and then come back in on the top with some lighter, and that gives it depth. Anything in acrylic painting, the farther away something is, like for mountains and things like that, the farther away something is, it needs to be light. But when it comes to a tree, you are going to need to put a dark background on there because the sun's not hitting that tree right through every leaf, every limb. It's going to hit it on the ones that are on top, so that's what needs to be lighter on top. Um, on mountains, so when you're painting and you want to paint mountains, um, let's not paint two humps on a canvas that looks like a woman's boobs. Let's make them different. So we're going to go in. A lot of people will go in and they'll do, okay, I'm doing this mountain and I'm doing this mountain. There's their mountain. Right there. That is not a mountain. Mountains go in different layers, different heights. I don't know if you can see this. Um, and maybe one of the bit different sizes. And you don't want to have them all the same size. Uh, the far away ones, like these in the distance back here, we're going to add a little bit of white. And so these back here in the distance would be a little bit lighter. And this would be a little bit lighter. So mountains in the background would be lighter than they would in the foreground. It's just rule of thumb. When you're painting with acrylics, you want to make sure, well, painting with anything, you want to make sure that the background, the farthest thing away is your light colors. And then as you get closer, they get more detailed and they get darker. Um, another thing would be on landscapes would be your path. If you have a path, you don't want to make your pathway, uh, let me get that brush back again, dip it into my paint. You don't want to have, say this is, is your horizon line, you don't want to have that pathway down straight. You want to be able to do a pathway where it's kind of like a S shapes, that gives it more interest. Um, with the painting, it doesn't divide your painting in half. Um, and one of the other things um, that beginners will do is they make everything in their painting the same size. You want to have different sizes of things. If you have a tree over here that is this size, da -da -da -da, and maybe you want to have another tree that's bigger, that's in front of that, because it's closer. So it, you, you want to have a circle here, but then you want to have a bigger circle here. It draws interest in your painting. It doesn't make it where everything is like, here's everything, here's everything, kind of like a person that's giving a speech and it's like monotone and you fall asleep. You want to bring your viewer's eye everywhere in that painting. Um, and Speaking of that, um, your focal point, that is one that, that is another mistake that a lot of beginners will make. You don't want your focal point to be smack dab in the middle of your painting. You just don't. Offset it just a little bit. Say you want to bring it over here. Bring it, bring it over here to the right side. Not all the way. And then add some more details over here, maybe crossing over into the middle, maybe over here, blah, 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 blah. But just don't divide your painting in half. That is one of the most common mistakes that beginners will make is they, they use too much water, they divide their painting in half, um, and they don't use enough paint. So that's most of these in a nutshell. So I hope y'all enjoyed my video and I hope this was kind of helpful. I know this is like scribbly back behind here, but um, I'm going to have some other videos coming on um, as far as loading your brush um, and how to paint for beginners. So if 
you want, you can uh, subscribe, like, share, subscribe below, and I uh, hope I see you back on my next video. And be sure to check my website out at www.suzanneevansart.com. Thank you. God bless.